What's up, B2? Capital G here. Got a myriad of really cool duels for you guys to check out in this video. Actually, got to give a very big shout out to Mystic V because he is the one in these duels. He's also the person who sent me these duels. He's a small Yu Gi tuber still on that grind, trying to get noticed by the Yu Gi Oh community. And he does a really good job with his channel. I've actually been subscribed to Mystic V for a long time. Maybe you're not super familiar with his content. I implore you to check it out. You might actually see him occasionally in my videos commenting on some of my duels or commenting on some of my discussions overall he's a great tuber and i think that he deserves a lot more support and you know more subs than he actually has because he definitely is putting out some pretty good content so we'll see mystic v in action we got three different duels and he has three completely different decks here the first one is actually well i think it's thunder dragons featuring battery man because i can't say that it's like fully battery man or anything like that really i think the main card you're running is like solar battery man you don't really use the other ones but definitely has some synergy especially if you run um thunder clap sky wolf and you can summon that back with some summon summoner that card from soul fusion i'm not i don't love that name some summon summoner it's just it's not practical to say so anyways in case noble knights are up first and uh, noble knights are gonna make i sold makes artorgius and he activates the noble knight trap card gets himself a card gets it in the graveyard it's actually i'm not gonna lie it's, it's pretty it's better than i thought it was it is kind of slow and i wish it had, it had some disruption but it's actually pretty good in concept so there's your boy some summon summoner activates gold sarcophagus on the origin to get another copy and he is going to be able to crack this board as he summons Colossus and Titan both in the same turn. And then it's just a little bit of the battle phase because his monster, his Artorgius, can only be protected by battle one time. The first time that it was destroyed by battle. And Thunder Dragons are able to easily counter that board. He could have made Ball Load or Boar Sword, but I probably wouldn't have in my opinion. I just would have kept the Thunder Dragons. I think that maybe we could have saw Ball Load or Boar Sword from the other player as well, the Noble Knight player. He is going to get the um, Gus Gustadin uh, that's going to get taken out, but... Uh, it's going to float into our target, so maybe that wasn't the best play. But his uh, Thunder Dragon Lord is actually going to be protected. Or, man, I got to get those damn TCG names. I think that that one is uh, Colossalus, and the small one is Titan. He ranks it up again, and now he is the one with the counterattack. Well, not a full-on counterattack. He's not going to be able to clear everything his opponent has. He's able to keep this really big Thunder Dragon, the uh, Super Bowl or Thunder Dragon Titan. And now he's going to be the one who is capitalizing. See, this is why I say Noble Knight's got to run that hand trap because you have to have some way of stopping what your opponent's going to do. Otherwise, especially a deck like Thunder Dragon that has all types of offense, he's going to summon Hip Hip Shin again. And then he's going to go for the um, Nightmare Unicorn to go ahead and just spin the monster, take away all of that protection. And we know I sold. She's strong, but not necessarily strong during your opponent's turn. Noble Knight, also not a great top decking deck. So <laughs> that's pretty much a wrap. He's just going to commit suicide at this point he's like i don't want to live anymore and uh yeah he knows that he's pretty much lost that duel the second and third duel in my opinion are actually both better this one was kind of surprising this one was a little eye-opening and um I had never seen a Skull Servant deck do anything like this. Well, I'm not used to seeing Skull Servants run Preta Plants to begin with, or even Brilliant Fusion, but, you know, Brilliant Fusion, Preta Plants, like a small engine, so I can kind of understand how it's working. He did dump Mizuki in the graveyard with Malicious, and now, check these plays out that he's going to do. Now, keep in mind, he does have another summon. He's going to get his Skull Servant on the field, trades it for a Link Karibo, goes for Summon Sorceress, Proxy Dragon. Now, he's putting those cards back in his, uh, back in his graveyard with, um, um, burial from a different dimension and his skull serpent is going to get progressively stronger now tell me this how many of you guys ever thought you'd see firewall dragon summoning skull servants because i was like wait what but this is not going to be a link spam play it's going to summon a couple more links but not what i would consider spammy in my opinion he is going to get King of the Skull Servants out. This card is at 5,000 attack, and he keeps on dumping monsters into his graveyard. So his Skull Servant just keeps getting progressively stronger. This thing is 7,000 attack, and this is pretty cool because not only does he have battle protection with the Link Karibo, but it also has a Firewall Bounce for two. So this is really good because it can be a disruptor for your opponent, and he can get his King of the Skull Servants out from his graveyard. Noble Knights are going to summon Madrot, but all you got to do is just bounce that. And now he can just summon his Skull Servants, and... I'm 
I mean, this is, what, 12,000 damage? Now, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't like this. This was so unnecessary. He goes for Mermaid, Nightmare Mermaid. I didn't like that play. I just would have tried to, you know, two-shot my opponent with the Skull Servants because you're reducing the attacks of the Skull Servants. And I don't know, I feel like you gotta win with the Skull Servant monsters on field. I guess he did want to technically just one-shot him because his Skull Servant was 8,000, but he could have just used two of them, maybe had a little, you know, tag team type duel there. But anyways, it's a pretty free victory because, you know, Firewall Dragon was really the only piece of disruption he needed for Noble Knights in that case. Now we have the final duel, and Mystic V is actually playing Dangers in this duel. He has all the new support from uh, Soul Fusion, so obviously it should be a little more potent than in the past, although, I don't know, maybe Dark World Danger is the best version. Noble Knights at the bottom, opening up pretty strong with I Sold, and he has an Impermanence Noble Knight Trap card, search Ivan just for the next turn, and I think he's going to go for Artorgius as well. It's a pretty good opening play. I just feel like all these plays need to be backed up by Morgan the hand trap because if you have that you're basically shutting down your opponent's best play and you just uh, get to you know stop them in their tracks danger are going to be able to push through just about all of this the fact that the danger monster is just constantly activating the hand over and over again really strong I think noble knights get a free copy of rota there off the noble knight trap card but the trap in my opinion is much more impactful off the off of its graveyard effect not the on field effect I think dark Reffer being shut down by that impermanence was huge huge because it just did not allow him to use the effects although danger are still in this duel because you know it's a pretty good top decking deck he's got the monster reborn he's going to be able to go on the tomahawk and i actually thought like right here when he got all the tokens i thought he was going to be able to win this duel just based on having six monsters on field but then he went for some troll plays i'm not sure about what, what mystic he was doing here he goes for power code talker and then underclock uh taker and i was like okay i, I guess but you know noble knight still have four cards in hand and he does doesn't even need his hand removes the um the noble knight trap card gets madrat and then he's basically able to get isoed for like free and once you can do that i think it's way too good so he has two level fours on field, ends up popping the power code talker, and you see so much of Noble Knight Brothers as of late. He's going to be able to get five monsters on field without even using his Isolde, without even using his extra deck, although I'm pretty sure Isolde is going to make an appearance, because just why, I mean, why the hell not? I sold such a strong card. I think he's actually going to go for Artorgius again as well, but activating Noble Knight Brothers. Yeah, it seems like Brothers has become one of the best cards, because Noble Knights go through their cards so quickly now that I think Brothers is like a really good recovery card for them, and it allows them to have a monster on board and at the same time you know draw a card potentially like a, a card that can defend them now at this point I think Mystic V is getting a little styled on <laughs> his opponent has like 10 cards on field he's like yo Borlo time <laughs> He did not need to go for this at all. He could have just attacked for game, but I think he's going for style points. We always award those on this channel, and that is a wrap. Danger, still not quite at that level, unless you're running Dark World Danger. I believe in Dark World Danger. Pure Danger, not so sure as of right now, because some of those cards are not going to be good against certain matchups, you know, setting, or being able to pot like a set card. It doesn't work against Noble Knights. They don't really set many cards all that much, but anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed these duels if you did check out mystic v thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already turn on that notification bell as always and check out these other videos i think you'll enjoy